In this video, we're going to talk about how to find a surface area of revolution of a parametric function. So let's say that x is equal to t squared plus 4 and y is equal to a t. And we want to find the surface area of revolution when it's rotated about the x-axis from 0 to 2. So what do we need to do in order to get this answer? The first thing I recommend doing is finding dx dt and dy dt. So dx over dt is 2t, dy over dt is 8. Next, use this formula. So to find a surface area about the x-axis, it's going to be 2 pi y times the integral from alpha to beta of the square root of dx over dt squared plus dy over dt squared. In this case, y, we can see that it's equal to 8t Alpha is 0, and beta is 2. So we're going to integrate it from 0 to 2. dx dt is 2t. dy dt is 8. So let's go ahead and simplify this expression. So we're going to have 16 pi times t integral from 0 to 2 square root 4t squared plus 64dt. So now let's focus on evaluating this integral. So what technique do we need to use? The best technique to use right now is u substitution. So we're going to make u equal to 4t squared plus 64. du is going to be 8t dt. And solving for dt, that's going to be du divided by 8t. So the surface area about the x-axis is going to be 16 pi. And then I'm going to take this t, move it inside here. So times the integral from 0 to 2. The integral is going to change the limits of integration because I'm going to replace this with u. So I'm not going to put the numbers yet. So this is going to be the square root of u. And then I'm going to replace dt with du over at. So we can see that t will cancel. Now, when t is 0, what is the value of u? So u is going to be 4 times 0 squared plus 64. So it's just going to be 64. Now, when t is 2, it's going to be 2 squared times 4, which is 16 plus 64, so that's 80. So this is now going to be 64 to 80. Now I'm going to move the 8 to this side. So 16 pi divided by 8 is 2 pi, and then we're going to integrate it from 64 to 80, and the square root of u is u to the 1 half times du. Now the antiderivative of u to the 1 half is 1 half plus 1, that's going to be 3 over 2, and then times 2 over 3, and then we have a 2 pi out in the front. So 2 pi times 2 over 3, that's going to be 4 pi over 3, and then times u to the 3 over 2, evaluated from 64 to 80. So we're going to have 80 raised to the 3 over 2 minus 64 raised to the 3 over 2. So 80 raised to the 3 over 2, that's like 715.542. 
That's 64 to the 3 over 2. That we can simplify. That's 64 to the half raised to the third power. The square root of 64 is 8. And 8 to the third, that's 512. So 715.542 minus 512. That's going to be about 203.542. Now the last thing we need to do is multiply by 4 pi over 3. And so I got 852.5947. And so that's the approximate surface area of revolution when it's rotated about the x-axis for this problem. Now let's move on to the next problem. Let's say that x is equal to t squared and y is equal to t cubed. And we want to find the surface area on the interval 0 to 1. And this time, we want it to be rotated about the y-axis as opposed to the x-axis. So how is the formula different in this case? So s sub y, it's not going to be 2 pi y. This time, it's 2 pi x times the integral from alpha to beta. And the rest is going to be the same. The square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. So that's the formula we need to use. So let's go ahead and find dx dt and dy dt. dx dt is equal to 2t and dy dt is 3t squared. So s of y is going to be 2 pi x. In this case, x is t squared times the integral from alpha to beta, so from 0 to 1, and then dx dt, that's going to be 2t squared plus dy dt squared. So that's 3t squared squared. Now let's simplify the expression. So we have 2 pi t squared, 2t squared, 2 squared is 4. So this is going to be 4t squared, 3 squared is 9, and t squared squared is going to be t to the 4th. Now, inside the radical, we can take out a t squared. So we're going to have the square root of t squared times 4 plus 9 t squared. And so you could separate this into two separate radicals. And so the square root of t squared becomes t. So this is what we now have. Now I'm going to take the t squared on the outside and combine it with the t on the inside. So I have s sub y is equal to 2 pi integral from 0 to 1 t to the third times the square root of 4 plus 9t squared dt. Now we're going to have to use u substitution again, but this time it's a little different. So let's make u equal to 4 plus 9t squared. Therefore du is going to equal 18t dt. And solving for dt, that's going to be du divided by 18t. So this is going to become the square root of u times du over 18t. So notice that we can cancel a t. And we're going to be left with t squared times the square root of u, du. Now we need to solve for t squared particularly in this equation. So let's go ahead and subtract both sides by 4. So we're going to have u minus 4 is equal to 9t squared. Now, if we multiply both sides of that equation by 1 over 9, we're going to get 1 over 9 times u minus 4 is equal to t squared. And so we have this.
Now, we need to change the numbers. T was initially between 0 and 1. So we need to change that to values associated with u. So when t is 0, what is u? So it's going to be 4 plus 9 times 0 squared. So that's going to be 4. And then when t is 1, it's going to be 4 plus 9 times 1 squared. So that's 9 plus 4, and that's 13. So we need to integrate this from 4 to 13. Now I know you might be wondering why does the board look a little different. It's because I've done some video editing and I forgot to put the 9 on the bottom. So 2 pi over 18 reduces to pi over 9. So this is what we should have at this moment. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to isolate t squared in this expression. So let's subtract both sides by 4. So it's going to be u minus 4 is equal to 9t squared. And let's multiply both sides by 1 over 9. So it's 1 over 9 times u minus 4. That's equal to t squared. So this is going to be pi over 9 times the integral of 1 over 9, u minus 4, u to the 1 half, du. Now initially, the values of t were 0 to 1. But we need to change it using this expression. So when t is 0, u is going to be 4. And when t is 1, u is going to be 13. So u is between, it will vary between 4 and 13. So now I'm going to multiply 9 times 9. So this is going to be pi over 81, integral from 4 to 13. And then I'm going to distribute u to the 1 half to u minus 4. So u to the 1 half times u, that's going to be u to the 3 over 2. And then u to the 1 half times negative 4, that's negative 4 u to the half. So now we can integrate this expression. The antiderivative of u to the 3 over 2, using the power rule for integration. We need to add 1 to 3 over 2, so that becomes 5 over 2. And instead of dividing by 5 over 2, we're going to multiply by 2 over 5. Now 1 half plus 1 is 3 over 2, and then we're going to multiply by 2 over 3. So let's evaluate this from 4 to 13. So we're going to have pi over 81, and then 2 over 5 times 13 raised to the 5 over 2. 4 times 2 is 8, so this is going to be negative 8 over 3, 13 raised to the 3 over 2. And then minus pi over 81, 2 over 5, 4 raised to the 5 over 2 minus 8 over 3 times 4 raised to the 3 over 2. So what is 13 raised to the 5 over 2? How can we simplify this? 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. And 2.5 is 1 plus 1 plus 0.5 or half. So this becomes 13 times 13, which is 169 times the square root of 13. So that's 13 raised to 2.5. So right now we have pi over 81 times 2 over 5 times 169 square root 13. Now what about 13 to the 1 half or 1 1.5? So that's 13 to the 1 times 13 to the half, which is 13 square root 13. Now what about 4 raised to the 5 over 2? So that's 4 to the 1 half raised to the 5th power. 4 to the 1 half, that's the same as the square root of 4, which is 2. And 2 to the 5th power is 32. Now 4 to the 3 halves, you can write it as 
4 to the half raised to the 3. So you could say that's the square root of 4 to the third power, which is 2 to the third power. And that's 8. So this is minus pi over 81 times 2 over 5 times 32 minus 8 over 3 times 8. So I'm going to factor out pi over 81 from everything. So I can combine the contents of these two brackets into one single pair of brackets. One sixty nine times two. That's three hundred and thirty eight. So we have three thirty eight square root thirteen over five. Now eight times thirteen. That's one oh four. So this is negative one oh four square root thirteen over three. And then 2 times 32 is 64, but there's a negative in front, so it's going to be negative 64 over 5. And then 8 times 8 is 64, but we have two negatives, so that's going to be positive 64 over 3. So let's get common denominators. Let's multiply this by 3, this by 5, and this fraction by 3 over 3, and the last one by 5 over 5. So this will give us a common denominator. Of 15. Three thirty eight times three, that's going to be a thousand fourteen, and then we're going to have the same denominator. One oh four times five is five hundred twenty. Sixty four times three, that's one ninety two. 64 times 5, that's going to be 320. Now, let's go ahead and combine fractions. So, 1014 minus 520, that's going to be 494. And then negative 192 plus 320. That's 128. And now we can write this as a single fraction. So this is going to be 493, I mean 494 rather, square root 13 plus 128, all over 15. Now let's see how we can simplify our final answer. 494 and 128 are both even numbers. So I'm going to pull out a 2. So I'm going to have a 2 pi out in the front. So 494 divided by 2, that's going to be 247. And half of 128, that's going to be 64. So I have this. I'm going to multiply 81 by 15. So my answer is going to be 2 pi times 247 square root 13 plus 64 and then 81 times 15 is 1215. So let's get the decimal answer for this. So this is equal to 4.9364. And that's the surface area when it's rotated about the y-axis. That's the answer.